Hey guys, what's going on? So recently I've gotten into buying physical media for old systems like Genesis, Nintendo, Super Nintendo games. And for my Genesis games, I can play those with my Sega Genesis flashback for Matt games. But I didn't have anything to play my Nintendo or Super Nintendo games on. I have no consoles to play these older games. So instead of investing in an original Nintendo and Super Nintendo, I decided to go the clone console route. And we'll be talking more specifically about clone consoles in a different video. But I wanted to check one out specifically to see how it meets my needs. And the one I picked was the Classic 2 HD from Old School. This is actually one of the cheaper systems. It does play Nintendo and Super Nintendo cartridges. It's got some good features like the ability to use original controllers on it, a PAL region switch, and the ability to change the aspect ratio from 4.3 to 16 by 9. The big draw with this one, in my opinion, was that it allowed you to play this on modern TVs with HDMI out, and it also allows for composite output as well. This type of clone console is an SOC, a system on chip. It's one of the cheaper kinds that you can find. It's kind of in between the emulation consoles and the FPGA, where it allows you to play cartridges on it, but it may not be at the highest quality. First things first, let me show you what comes in the box on the Classic 2 HD. All right, here we go. The Classic 2 HD, we have 720p aspect ratio and region switches plays nes and snes games also uses av out in case you want to use this on a old crt tv let's open this up oh yes it is all right here we go oh everything's right in your face as soon as you open up the box lots of plastic too let's get rid of this i know there's more hiding under the system here we have an hdmi cable so something else underneath here yep here we go the instruction manual manuals they gave me two i don't know why and finally let's get the system out of here also let's take it out of the plastic so we can really look at these here's our power brick 5 volt 2000 milliamp red white and yellow composite cables our usb micro usb for power the snes styled controller this looks you know at least in shape exactly like the original SNES style controller. These buttons feel really good too. And it does have the original SNES style hookup. And you can use this on your original Super Nintendo if you want. Now, it should be noted, these buttons are a little, little shallow. They don't stick out too, too much. It looks, they look fine over here, but uh, the Y and X buttons seem to be a little further in than the A and B. Not sure why that is. Also, all four buttons are convex. So more on the style of the Japanese and European versions of the controller. In the US, ours were concave. Select and start feels great. D-pad feels solid, nothing wrong with the D-pad. Just the Y and X buttons feel a little funky, not too, too bad. And our dog bone NES style controller. Besides the color scheme, this looks exactly like the dog bone controller from the NES, as well as this little raise part here for the B and A buttons. These buttons feel much better than the Super Nintendo. Select and start. Ooh, very good, very clicky. This D-pad actually feels really nice. There were a couple videos saying this D-pad didn't feel good. Um, it feels great on here. Those videos are a couple years old, so maybe old school got it together and they did a little bit better on their controllers because this feels really great. Doesn't feel spongy like I've heard on some reviews. It feels really good. And once again, original hookups. You can use this on the original NES if you choose. These were actually one of the main reasons I wanted this system because these controllers look so close to the original, and I hear they work really well. And here it is, the Classic 2 HD itself. You have the power button here in the middle. Push up for NES, down for SNES. To the right of it, you have the reset button. Spring loaded. Looks like this would light up if the system was powered on. On the front, two controller ports each. Two for Super Nintendo, two for Nintendo. On the bottom of the system is an NTSC and PAL switch, so you can collect PAL games and use them on the system if you wish. On the rear of the system, we have the HDMI output, the composite left-right audio and video output, the DC in for power, and what I like to call, why do we have this button? It switches the aspect ratio from 4.3 to 16 by 9. And up top, you have the two cartridge bays. The bottom one is for the SNES, Top one is for the NES. Taking a close look in here, these pins look really good. I don't see anything bent, nothing out of shape. Same with the Super Nintendo, all the pins look really good. 
And there you go, here's everything that comes in the box with the old school Classic 2 HD. So the system to me looks amazing. I love the black and red. I think it looks great. It's one of the better looking clone consoles in my opinion. And I like how the controller inputs are arranged in the front. And again, has a ton of great features for a clone console. But the big question you have to ask yourself with these clone consoles is how well does it play these cartridges? Now there's no menu interface, nothing like that. You just plug it in, put the cartridge in, power it on. I'll let you know ahead of time that I'm not very impressed. I'm not hugely familiar with the system on chip consoles, but from my research I found that a lot of them play the games very similar, especially in the sound department. You're going to see that very soon. I'm going to hook this up, we're going to take a look at my Super Nintendo game Warlock first. Now I'm not really familiar with this game on the Super Nintendo. I do know the Genesis version a little bit, so I couldn't really tell you if the sound was off or not. Maybe someone who is more familiar with this game can tell me if the sound is off as well, but it sounds okay to me when I compare it to a ROM on my Super Nintendo Mini. First thing I want to show you guys is that on the fly you can change the aspect ratio from 4.3 to 16 by 9. Just by hitting the switch on the back you can do that while the game is running no problem. Alright, so here we are and yeah, the, the controller is responsive, but these buttons just feel so, I don't know, they feel really really squishy and really sunk into the controller. But they do work fine. Everything is working fine. All the buttons are responsive. I can shoot however I want. I can control the orb how I want. Everything's working no problem. It just feels really, I don't know, really weird. And the game looks nice. You can see that the pixels do have a little bit of blur to them. I personally like that. I know some people like the sharp pixels. It makes them look a little bit better on HDMI TVs. But to me, I love this look. Take care of some bass. We're crossing the bridge here. That was the Warlock, by the way. He just took out this bridge trying to stop us. It's going to take a little more than that to stop whoever we are. And now he's going to make a werewolf, which could possibly stop us. But yeah, right here is where I thought, man, this looks really, really dark. And that's when I started comparing it to running this game on the SNES Classic or on an emulator on my PC. So here's that comparison now. So it played Warlock really well. The controls were responsive, but the image quality, I don't know what was going on. It seemed very dark. It did not look very good at all, in my opinion. It was really hard for me to get past that to actually play the game and see it the way it was supposed to be played. But it does play well, and the graphics do look pretty good on an HDMI output. I know some people prefer the sharp pixels, but in my opinion, the little blurring on the pixels looks great. Now let's take a look at some NES games on the Classic 2 HD and this is what really skewed my opinion about this console. Now I'm actually glad this happened. This is supposed to be Super Mario Brothers, but you can tell that the cartridge is a little dirty and this is how you know it's actually playing the games from the cartridge. But let me show you a few Nintendo games so you can see how the Classic 2 HD runs them. Alright, so here we go. Super Mario Brothers. I wanted to pick this game because I feel like it's one of the most recognized games on this system. And right off the bat, you can tell that the graphics look super good. They are insanely sharp. Everything looks great. Now I'm using the Super Nintendo controller that came with the Classic 2 to play this. And it's nice because when using this controller, the Y button acts as B and the B button acts as A. So it is in the correct configuration when using this controller with Nintendo games. So the game looks really nice. Let's start it up and see how it sounds. I'm no expert, but I know when something just doesn't sound right, and this game does not sound right. None of the sound effects 
just like that right there. None of it sounds correct. It sounds like it's... I don't know what the phrase is. Like, it's, it's too high. It's like everything is playing at the wrong note. Both the sound effects and the background music. Not only that, but I don't know what part of the song you call it, but like the percussion in the background is really, really like highly defined. And when I played this for Cass, because Cass doesn't play a lot of games, but when I played it for her, she's like, why is it so loud? So even she noticed that there was something up with the sound on this thing. And I thought, well, maybe it's just Mario. So I popped in a few of my other games to test out. And here's a quick comparison of a few games that I took a look at on the Classic 2 HD. So unfortunately it just seems like the sound is not correct on this system, which is a shame because everything looks really, really nice. All the graphics are almost perfect in my opinion. <sighs> yeah, so I mean the games look great, they run great, but they sound terrible. I consider myself more of a casual gamer, but I mean these are games I grew up with and for the sound to be that poor, I can't get past it. I thought I could. I've seen the videos. I've seen other reviewers look at this system and I'm like, it can't be that bad. It's that bad. In my opinion, it's almost so bad that it changes the entire game and it takes me away from that experience. And that's just my opinion. I could not get past that sound issue. I thought it may be only one or two games, but when, when I tried it out on these games that I'm very familiar with, I just couldn't get past it. But you may be okay with that. You may preference good visuals over sound and the differences in sound from the originals may not bother you that much. And if that's the case, this is a pretty good system, especially for the price in that it allows you to play both NES and Super Nintendo games. And because it's not an emulation machine, it will work with your multi-cards or your EverDrives. One other thing I did want to talk about this console was how tightly it gripped these games. It's not as bad with Super Nintendo games. It's still pretty tight. It's not too too bad it doesn't feel great coming out but nintendo games seem even worse putting in an nes game then trying to get it out really is a struggle i didn't feel that it was on a game by game basis they all felt pretty tight unless you kind of angle it out and pull it up but it doesn't really feel good to me to try and yank it out from the side i don't know if that's the normal way you're supposed to do this then maybe i'm wrong but it seemed like it was very tightly gripping these games so if you can get past the sound issue, I recommend this system. But if you're like me who really relishes in the more authentic experience, I think I would sacrifice a little bit of graphic quality over sound. Something about the sound of the games that really hit me more than the graphics. Like I mentioned before, I actually like that the pixels aren't insanely sharp and they still have that fuzzy feeling, but the sound kills it. So for me, I'm passing up on the Classic 2 HD. I'm gonna have to keep looking for something better and everybody's recommending the FPGA systems to me. So I think we may have to go that route. Just based on my experience with this, I think we need to spend the money 
and actually get quality. That's all I got for you guys. What do you think about the Classic 2 HD? Have you gotten one of these? Am I being too picky about the sound? Do you think the sound is fine, the graphics are fine, and that this is worth the $65, $70 price point? Or are you in the same boat as me and you just couldn't get past the sound differences on the NES games? Or how dark the Super Nintendo games looked? Please let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. And that's all I got for you. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Eric Cologne, Jordy Alex, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Dor, Yaroslav Orudzov, Den Cardoso, Andre G, Randy Day, Travis Morton, Rick67, Craig Livesley, Jason Hallbrooks, Red, John Westby, and Batman.